What's up Facebook Live? Joe coming to you here, finishing up this bathroom again. And I started feeling a little something in my throat, so don't forget apple cider vinegar. All I do is drink right out of the bottle of this thing, take a swig of this, kill any kind of bacteria or germs. I'm gonna give you an update on the bathroom here, give you an update on the insights of today's phone conversations. I had multitude of conversations today with people I have never spoke to once on the phone. What's up there, Aaron? Good to see you, brother. How's things up in Canada up there, man? Good to see you, Georgia. Guys, keep showing up. I love it. I'm going to give you an update here on this bathroom. But number one, remember, take care of the body. I was feeling my throat getting a little bit scratchy. I don't know if it was from the dust in here yesterday or from the, I was getting my eyes are burning right now from the the sealer that I just put on the shower, I'll show you here in a minute. It goes on like an aqua color. When it's dry, it turns green. So I was just coming in here to put down the floor tile. And it's still not dry because we got a lot of humidity here today. Good to see you guys logging in here. So let me show you the uh, tile here. So don't forget apple cider vinegar, warm water with lemon. Keep those bodies healthy. Vitamin C, vitamin D. The sun is out now. Get out there and get your vitamins. So check it out. Here's the sealer. So it goes on this aqua color. You can see the aqua still there, but then down here it's nice and green. That's dry. Over there still got aqua, so I gotta wait. But here's the floor tile. Pretty cool, right? So I'm gonna get really creative and put that thing around the uh, around the drain and stuff like that. So this whole thing in here, as you can see in here, I put super duper coats on that thing right there because that was natural wood back there. And I globbed it on down in there. I will also put in some silicone down in there because that's where our shelving unit is going to be in those two little boxes there. So I will put some silicone into those corners in case water ever does get in there, it will drip away. And the other thing that I do is instead of putting the shelves flat, I'll put it on a little bit of an angle. So if any water does get on there, it'll run off and then down into the shower. And I will bump it out on the wall from about a quarter of an inch out from the wall. So any water does get up on those shelves, it'll go out and go down straight down onto the lower level. And that's going down the side of the tile to make sure we eliminate water from getting inside there. What's the name of the sealant? It was like Aqua Seal or something like that. It's made by Mapai at Lowe's. M-A-E-P-I-E. Mappy or Mapai, they pronounce that. They have it at Lowe's. Depot, they all sell that stuff. I think there's like a... R plus eight stuff out there as well. All that stuff out there. Yeah, like a drip edge, exactly. I, I, most people put it flush. I don't like doing that. Same thing with my roofing. I'll go over the roof an extra little half an inch too. I don't want any chance of that water getting into the house or dripping onto the house, making a mess of that thing. Map pie, there you go. You got it, Aaron. Yep, go online. It's aqua sealant or something like that. It's called, comes in a small little tub, almost like those repair things. Oh. That's why I want to give you guys too another insight today on the uh, sheet rocking stuff. There are several types of compound for doing the patching of your walls. Do not buy those stupid little containers in the store. It says like wall patch. That stuff doesn't work and it's very difficult to sand. They have five minute, 20 minute, 45 minute and 90 minute stuff that you can mix. And you're always gonna get holes in your wall so you can buy those bags. I think it's like 11 or 12 bucks a bag and that stuff will last you forever. You can put it inside of a, a garbage bag, a plastic bag, and that stuff will last forever. So I would recommend getting the 90. Get the 90 weight mix. You can mix it up into a tray, get it to the right consistency, and use that stuff for putting on your walls and it's easier to sand. I went to two jobs last week where people bought those stupid little containers at the hardware store and they slapped it on there and they made a mess of it. I had to go down there and scrape all that off and put the nice new smooth finish on there. The guy was like, I can't believe how smooth you got that and you've only been here for an hour. So my secret that day was I put 20 minute on and then I used the finish coat afterwards. I said, just give this a little bit of a wet sand and you'll be fine. So they were super, super happy about that. Much more work time with 90, yeah, absolutely. So that's a secret tip for you guys from the home improvement specialist here down in Virginia. Like I said, I've been doing this for a long time, over 20 years in the industry, 35 houses we fixed and flipped. I'm here doing our custom shower. So here is our tile for you guys just logging on here. That tile is gonna go right on there and fill it on with grout. And I will do a nice seal on that tile. Always get the proper sealant for that stuff. This green stuff on here is 
sealing that wonder board. So even if water were to get behind the tile, this shower is going to last 20 years. That shower will last 20 years. You can even put on green board sheetrock and that thing will probably last about 10, 15 years. As long as you take care of the grout lines, do not allow water to seep into those grout lines behind the tile and get that wet. And even then, I've seen those things last three or four years where they get behind it. But the problem is mold will grow inside that sheetrock behind that tile. Even if you use the green board, you'll still get some of that mold in there. You do not want mold in your house. You do not want water in your house. So today's message was three things. I had a couple conversations with guys today. Never spoke to these people before in my life. And this morning's phone conversation was very enlightening. So the story that the mind is telling us, right? So our minds are our biggest enemy. And the mind's going to tell you several different stories. So is your story helping you? Hurting you? Or is it putting fuel on the fire? And this guy this morning, we were getting into a little bit of a disagreement back and forth until finally we got him to a space of, he awakened to the point where he understood. He says, now I get what you're saying. I, I can hear the anger inside of you. So it's a story that you're telling yourself, regardless of what the circumstances, is it helping, hurting, or is it adding fuel to the fire? Ask yourself those three questions. Because many times the mind is telling us one story and we would rather be right than happy. I always say be a part of the solution. It's like back in the days when I was a manager in corporate America, we go into these manager meetings and people would come in, they'd have a, a plethora, a whole laundry list of things that weren't right. But they couldn't come up with one or two things that were working right. And then to top it off, they wouldn't even have a, a, a suggestion on how to solve the problem. All they want to do is be the whistleblowers, I call them. Blow the whistles. Shh. Blow the whistle. No, we don't need your whistles. We need a solution. What is the solution that you're going to provide? Don't come to the meeting with just the problem. What is the solution? That's what I want to know is, are you helping, hurting, or are you adding fuel to that fire that the story that the mind is telling you? And I get it, because a lot of this stuff can get very emotional. I've seen a couple things on the news today where they were getting some really deep, deep, dark stuff going on. And I get it. I understand it. I understand both sides of it. But is what we're doing helping, hurting, or adding fuel to the fire? In all areas of life. I got the phone with that guy this morning. I know he, he understood the message. And that's probably the beautiful thing. What's up, Eric? Good to see you, brother. That's probably the beautiful thing right there. Is that when you can awaken somebody else. I had a deep conversation with another girl towards the end of the day. I was looking at doing some social media stuff here locally. I'm looking for people here locally to start spreading this message here in Virginia to assist with building those veteran homes, to assist with these live events. I started sharing some of the stories with her. She was like, wow, this is going to be huge. Looking forward to attending that live event. And I told her about the speakers that will be on the stage. Hey, Tracy, what's going on, girl? You hear my voice is very hoarse. Yesterday I was cutting up all that. If you guys saw the video yesterday, used that diamond blade cutting up all that wonder board and that dust was flying around. I woke up, I think, like 4 o'clock choking. Even had the mask on, didn't matter. Today we did all this. So check it out, guys. We did all this today with the, uh, the sealer. So you sealed all this wonder board up in here where the shelves are going. I put an extra thick coat in there right into the cracks. So as you saw yesterday, that was all wood in there. So I sealed that wood. Even if water got in there, Kim, that thing's going to be sealed up nicey, tighty, tight. No water will ever get in the shower. This thing will last for 20 years. Here's the tile we're putting down here, a little pebble rocks like when you used to walk in the river. And what's nice about these, if you look like right here, you see a little cutout right there? That'll fit perfectly around the drain. So I am gonna get strategic when I lay these things in here. I was gonna do it tonight, but this thing is not drying. As you can see, the dry spots are green and the aqua blue spots are wet. And there's so much humidity in the air here today, it didn't dry. What's up, Chris Tomorrow? Good to see you, man. So I was just coming in here. I just had a little break here with dinner. Kathy made a beautiful salmon dinner tonight with some broccoli some sweet potatoes, and I came in here to, to do my Facebook Live and start doing this work, and I saw it wasn't done yet. I said, you know what? 
I guess it's gonna have to wait till tomorrow, but I have two jobs already lined up for Saturday and Monday, so I wanted to get this thing done. So now I'm gonna be working into the midnight hours when I come back from my job sites there. Have you used the shoulder systems? No, but I have seen those, Aaron. I have seen those. What's up, Dennis Simons? You playing any music there, Dennis? You guys back in business yet? <coughs> I hope you guys are back there jamming. I know Aaron Knight's a, a musician as well up in Canada. There's Dennis Simonson. These guys are highly skilled musicians. You guys don't follow these guys. You love music. I love music. Oh, check this out, Dennis. And Aaron, I just picked up some Bose 501s from back in the 71 to 70 60s were made. I saw a friend of mine was selling his house. He reached out to me and said, they were selling these speakers for 200 bucks. I went over, I brought my system with me, I plugged in, I cranked that thing up with the movers were there, had my microphone on there, I was jamming into that microphone, I said, this sounds good, doesn't it? He goes, that sounds, those speakers sound awesome. I said, I know, that's why I'm here. They, they may not look that nice, but the other nice thing about it is, they actually are sturdy enough where I can set my DJ stuff right on top of the speaker. Yeah, those things freaking rock, man. More rock, less talk, right? Exactly. You can hear my voice is all hoarse between screaming and yelling on Monday at the ritual, yesterday with this uh, this dust, and then today with all this freaking ceiling stuff. And you know, Caddy said, I have to get out of here. I'm starting to get a headache. So I got the windows open here, the ventilation, I had the fan in here. But all in all, it's working very, very good here. But tonight's message was, are you helping, hurting, or are you adding fuel to the fire? Because you have to come with a solution. It's one thing to be the whistleblower and tell about what's wrong because there's no shortage of what's going wrong. How do we shift that energy and find out the solution to shift it into what's going right? That's the gift. Not many people can get creative and do that shift. And that's the space that we need to operate from every single day. So I'm going to go in here and take care of a few more things for the job site we got coming up on Saturday. i got a laundry list of things to pick up before we get to the job site. I'm going to bring Kathy with me. Kathy is going to be a painter this week. We're going to paint a railing and a uh, front lamp post. I'm changing the lamp post. 160 feet of fencing we're going to power wash. i got some sheetrock in our laundry room, some thresholds and things. So I'm like, give me, the, give me your laundry list. Keep adding to it. When we get there, we'll get all that stuff done in one shot. Probably make about 1000 bucks. One day's work, not too shabby. We'll take it and continue to move forward, working on these veteran homes, working on these flip homes. I went and looked at another flip home here yesterday. So all this stuff's lining up beautiful. We got the launch of the Rises One membership, dollar a day. So I got the one woman going to be working on that. Eric's working on that. We got several people working on all these projects. And the reality is all these things are going to help you. That's why we do all this. To benefit the collective. It's not about us individually it's about all of us rising as one to make a difference to end the suffering keep showing up they have not seen nothing yet when it's all said and done together we're going to rise as one